Thank you very much. Good morning, Brown Sun. Isn't it nice to be with good friends? Yeah, you turned to Chatty Cathy, and <laughs> that's good. Well, before uh, before we begin, I would like to ask: Are we? Do we have any visitors here? Any guests here? Raise your hand. Bobby's got something for you. You're really going to like it. If so, if you're a visitor, if you're a guest, raise your hand. We can't let her go back there empty-handed. Somebody, make a sacrifice. It's banana, banana, nut bread, or pumpkin bread, but quite good. Do we have, we have someone. I didn't want Bobby walking around for nothing. While she's doing that, if you'll notice in your bulletin that... <clears throat> There is this little thing at the end called request prayer and for members and guests. If you'd be so kind to fill that out, and when you do, you just pull that right out and you put that in the offering plate, which we're not passing around yet, but it's coming down the line. But if you leave, as you leave through the north exit, that door, exit over there, they have a little box you could put that in. It keeps our records up to date. We would appreciate that. And... We have one announcement by Cindy. This is for outreach this month. I had not been able to get up here to talk about Clothe the Child, but you've seen that on the screen. And also this morning, hopefully you each family got one of these that is a list, not only reminding you about Clothe the Child, but it also came to our attention about collecting school supplies for children from July 12th to August 9th. And we will have a box out there right now. There's some sacks underneath the table, but we will have a box for collection. Remember, we help this community quite a bit, and I hope that you consider the school children now for the next month and a half, and bless you all for what you do for our church. Thank you, Mary. I do have one other announcement. Uh, I understand congratulations go out to John Lee on his new grandson. Good morning, Branson Christian Church, and welcome. It's nice to see you all here this morning, especially to our visitors. We welcome you, and we do have a fellowship dinner after church, so you're more than welcome to stay. This is a place for all together, friend and foe, stranger and sibling. This is a place to listen and speak, to give and receive, to remember and dream. Come all of us, let us worship God. May we bow our heads in prayer. Holy One, thank you for this day of worship, this place of worship, and our many reasons for worship. Renew us in your great love and redirect us to share your great love. Amen. The first hymn 
is Amazing Grace. It's in the Hymns for the Living Church. It's also on the screen. Please join us.
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, once again, we come before your throne on this beautiful Sunday morning. In this day, this day, Lord, we come to worship you. We come to learn from you. We come to try and be like you. But sometimes we live in such a society today that there is so much fear and anxiety and uncertainty that people can lose track of the more important things in life. But this day, Father, I pray that you will be with those in our community who are suffering for many different reasons. People who are living with uncertainty, not knowing what's going to happen. Some living from paycheck to paycheck. Some having medical conditions but can't even afford to go to the hospital to have it taken care of. I pray, Father, that somehow, some way, that we, your ambassadors here on earth, can go forth and help those in need to make this a world that you created it to be. Help us that every day you can use us to change lives, that we can make a difference, that we can glorify you. And we thank you for healing us healing us in many different ways, changing us, helping us to get closer, more mature, helping us to eventually be the man or woman, boy or girl, you have called us to be. Help us to realize the plan you have for our life. And help us to always be hungry, hungry for your word, that we can search for your presence, in this day, Lord, what we give you is our obedience. We give you our love. We give you our obedience and we glorify you, Father. That is why we're here. We pray that you will be fed this morning, Lord. And now... Out of respect for you, we pray the prayer that God has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not Deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. We're going to do some old gospel music this morning, and a lot of these you know already. I used to do this, of course, and I just shout out the lines like the old pastors used to do when we didn't have hymnals. I'm going to do a little of that, but I have some, uh, I have some ringers up here that have the word. So we're going to start with uh, the old When We All Get to Heaven. You see, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us when we all. Prize. Onward to the prize be soon his beauty. Soon his beauty will be soon the pearly. The pearly gates will We shall tread the streets when we all when we all a day of rejoicing and be when we all Give G. 
place is so dear. The place is so dear. As a little brown church. As the little brown church in the bay. Come on, bases. Oh, come. Oh, come. same key. There's a land that is We shall sing, we shall sing on that beauty. The melodious songs of the blessed, the melodious songs of the blessed. And our spiritual sorrow, spiritual sorrow, no, not a sigh for the blessing, not a sigh for the blessing of Everything to God. Oh, what peace. Oh, what needless pain. Choir, have we trials and temptations? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord. No, oh, what peace. Oh, what peace we the key of this. Let's see me figure this out. Well, once was lost. Yeah, I once was lost. I see Jesus. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took then a little light, then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love, my heart in love, and wrote my name above. And just, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me. Now let us have, now let us have Doubts and fears. I may have doubts and fears. I go to him in prayer. 
he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it. Let us help. Now let us help. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us help. Base at all, am I? <laughs> Blessed assurance. Blessed Perfect submission, perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior. I and my Savior. I'm happy and blessed. Happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Watching and waiting. Filled with His goodness. Lost in His love. This is my flat now. On a hill stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. Ever be true. It's shame and reproach. And he'll call me someday.
passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. You know, oh Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be at home. Piano. That joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Just so very happy. And I'm so happy. So very happy. Got the love of Jesus, got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy. And I'm so happy. So very happy. Sing it, Bobby. finish with this. Oh, Lord, my God, when awesome wonder, consider all, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy love cross that on the cross my burden gladly bearing my burden gladly bearing he bled and died he bled and died to take away to take Christ shall come. When Christ shall come. With shout. With shout of acclamation. And take me home. And take me home. What joy. What joy shall fill my heart. And I shall bow. Then I shall bow. In humble adoration. And proclaim, and proclaim my God.
At this table, we, re we receive the bread of life and the cup of salvation, reminders of God's love for us and all creation. Through these gifts, we are reunited with God in all believers and all refreshed for our common work together in God's harvest fields. Come and dine, come and be renewed. Holy God, let us pray. Holy God, who sees us all, loves all, and comes to all, we have gathered and prepared ourselves for your coming. Come and be with us at this time of worship. Engulf us with your spirit of love and peace and joy. Show us how to be more like you. Teach us how we can love one another as you love us. Come and unite us, and never before we ask in your name. Amen. Please join in singing our communion hymn. Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had broke it, he said, this is my body, which is for you. Eat this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Now hear the prayers of the elders. Our Heavenly Father, we come so thankful for you and your invitation to this table. We know that many of us have fallen short of what you expect of us this week, but we also know that we can come to this table and share in this communion with you. We ask that you bless this bread that represented the body broken to be shared with each one of us and to be shared in our love to others. And the prayer continues. Lord, we gather at this table to remember the sacrifice that you and your son made so we could be saved. Thank you. Bless the strength that it may cleanse us. May we always be worthy, strive to be worthy of your love. Amen. And now please be seated. Join us as we share the communion.
May God open our hearts and strengthen our hands to share with others in ways that would give hope for life's journey. Let us pray. Trustworthy God, we offer now these limited gifts to spread the news of your unlimited love. Take and multiply them. Guide those who make decisions about their use and give us the courage to trust you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Now is the time for the collection of our tithes and offerings. We will not be passing collection plates at this time, but instead we ask that you leave your gifts in the box in the narthex. You may click on the BransonChristianChurch.com, click on Donate, and simple directions are there for you to follow to give to the church and its missions. May God bless the gifts that we will receive. Thank you. The scripture reading this morning is Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. When his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you filled with Fearful, O you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? This concludes our scripture reading. Can you recall the last time that you were living with uncertainty? This morning, is that right? Uncertainty means you don't know how it's going to end. You don't know what's going to happen. You're not in control anymore. You're uncertain. And you're like this. And until it's solved, you experience fear. But as I look out into the audience, I see many of you who have been through the storm. Many of you have been through incredible events in your life. But look at you now. You've learned from it. When we look at TV today, they talk about the beautiful people, how attractive they are. But that's not how the Bible sees beautiful people. The Bible describes a beautiful person as a person who's gone through life, has gone through many obstacles, many tragedies, Many things that sometimes were unbearable. But you've come through it. Through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's who you are because of those. It's who you are today. You're smarter. You're wiser. Perhaps more humble. Maybe more confident. But you can handle it when things go wrong. I believe in our society today, we're too soft. Today, there's too many people are too soft. If you think living without a cell phone is hard, some of you remember your grandparents. They didn't have electricity. They got up early. They worked all day. Sometimes we need to go through some adversity to be some kind of a human being that has 
anchored yourself in integrity. Living with uncertainty. In our scripture reading, this is one of the two scriptures in the Bible where the apostles find themselves in a boat. Life changing times. And look what happens. What happens in our scripture reading is this. After Jesus gives the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, 6, and 7 in Matthew, and then afterwards he's healing people. And by the end of the day, he's tired. Everyone's tired. And then Jesus says to the apostles, get in the boat. We need to go to the other side of the sea. And the Bible tells us they're in the boat. Everything's fine. And suddenly, a great tempest, that means a great storm, out of nowhere. The waves are crashing onto the boat. It looks really bad. And the apostles, they see all this going on. And they go to Jesus. And Jesus is sleeping. He's sleeping during the storm. And they're pushing, wake up, Jesus. We're going to die. Wake up, Jesus. Wake up, Jesus. Think about that. I wonder if that's ever happened to you when you were going through your own storm. And you were praying to the Lord and you didn't get an answer. And might you've been saying, wake up, Jesus. Wake up, Jesus. I need you. I'm going to die if you don't help me. Wake up, Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus opened his eyes. And he looked at them. Ye of little faith. And then he stood up. And he rebuked the sea. And he rebuked the waves. And suddenly it became calm. Just as suddenly it became this tempest, storm. And suddenly it became calm. And the apostles talk among themselves Who is this man? At the sea and the waves, obey him. Wow. In my personal opinion, I think this was a test. God was testing them. Sometimes in our life, it seems like God may take us right in the middle of a storm. Sometimes we feel like we're all alone. And maybe Jesus is the end of the storm, but he's not. He's in the middle of any storm in your life. Think of what would have happened to the apostles had they never been in the storm and they never had a chance to see Jesus, what he could do and how he could save them. They had to learn. They were being tested. Storm rises out of nowhere, ends out of nowhere, calm. But they're learning. They're learning. Now they know who this man is. They know this is the Messiah. As we go through life, there's going to be more, more storms in your life I can almost guarantee it, no matter how good you've been, things may happen. And how do you react during that that storm? How do you deal with the uncertainty that perhaps 
you have no way to pay the bills. Or you're studying for that nursing exam, and you don't know if you're going to pass or not. Or not knowing if the one you love is going to die. Or whatever it is, a hundred different things. How do you deal with that? In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, Paul is talking to the disciples and those of us today. And he says, be of good cheer. Do not lose heart. It's not going to last a long time. And it will end. But in the meantime, don't focus on what you see, which is only temporary. Focus on what you don't see, which is eternity. Focus on the Lord. There's a great passage in Isaiah. The, the 40, if you have a bulletin, write it down. Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 3. It's fantastic. These are the words that Jesus is saying to you today. Actually, this is God speaking. God is saying, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You're mine. When you walk through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God. I am your Savior. That is how we start building trust. You are never alone. You may think the Lord is sleeping, but the Lord is always in the middle of your storm. And through life, through life, you're going to be that beautiful person the one that people want to get to know. Now, how do we trust God? How do we do that? How do we focus on God? Remember that God has to do what he's got to do. And we have to help him succeed. Otherwise, God could fail. And you may say, Pastor Al, God, it's God. He can't fail. And you know what? You're right. And that's the whole point. He can't fail. You are the one. Have to build your trust. Say, yes, I know. My Redeemer lives. You have to let God proceed in his own way, on his terms, and in his time. In the meantime, be patient. But now, you may say, Pastor Al, is there an easier way to do this? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to show you what I think will help you a lot. The greatest decision that you will ever make in your life in regard to happiness is this. It is who you choose to spend your time with. That is the greatest decision you will make in terms of happiness. Why? Dr. Moran, sir, 
a neuroscientist at Northwestern University, has spent the last 10 years dealing with relationships, decisions, and he made some fantastic discoveries. If you're familiar with neural feedback, that's when you put a little cap on your head, like a, like a swimming cap, and little things are sticking out, and they put electrodes attached to it. If you ever had an EEG, you know what I mean. And with that, he's been able to measure the wavelength of people. And what he's discovered is fantastic. And what it means is this. The person that you choose to be with over time, you may not even be aware of it. You may not even notice it at first. But you will begin to change. And when they've hooked them up, they both have the same brain waves. Didn't even realize it. They both had the same brain waves. That's why if you see some older couples, why? One of them is they can fill in the sentences. They know what the other is thinking, what to say. They are on their own wavelength. Their wavelength, their, their waves are the same. What a wonderful thing. But there's a downside to that. What if you choose the wrong person? What if you choose a person that doesn't have your goals in life, doesn't have your, your sense of responsibility, and you start hanging with that person? And before long, you will begin to change. And before long, you become a person you never meant to be. You can start being like that person. Now, parents know what this is all about. When your daughter, your teenage daughter, is going to be going out with a guy on a motorcycle, long hair, tattoos up and down, cigarettes in his mouth, chances are you're not feeling good about this. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. No. Mm-mm. No. And you know this is not right because mom knows. If her daughter goes out with this guy, Lord have mercy. She knows her daughter is going to change. Solomon. Chapter 13, verse 20. He who is wise walks with the wise. But a companion of fools he will be destroyed. And Solomon's not kidding. If you start hanging around people with drug problems, criminal behavior, and you keep looking at their good side and you're not paying attention, before long, it can destroy your life. So what we learn is this. Choose your friends wisely. If you want to be something you're interested in life, be with those people. If you want to be happy, be with the people that are happy. Walk with the ones that have your same interests in mind. And you will slowly, not even being aware of it, will start taking on those characteristics. I want you to think very careful about this. This is not just a behavioral phenomenon. This is a neurological thing that happens. Choose your friends wisely. There's one other decision you make in your life. The greatest decision in your life, not just happiness, but everything, the greatest decision you'll ever make is when you choose Jesus 
as your best friend. When you spend time with the Lord, the more you spend, those brain waves of yours start getting a little better. And before long, you begin to act like Jesus. You'll not, you can't walk on water unless it's winter time. Can't do that. But the more time you spend with Jesus, your brain waves are going to be in a different spot, in a different place. And some of you, I, I won't point you, but I know that you walk with the Lord. Your brain waves and Jesus are really close. Think about it. It's true. Neurologically, when you read your Bible, when you pray, when you worship the Lord, the more you do this, you may not even be realizing it, but you're becoming more and more like the man or woman you're supposed to be. This is what it is. Brothers and sisters, we spend time with our, with our Lord. Spend time with our Lord. I hope you always remember this. And the trust will come. And the day will come. You may be having three or four emergencies at the same time. But you're so full of the Spirit, so full that you can go through it. You know it's going to be okay. What has to happen is going to happen. But you will be okay because you know you're not alone. Jesus is right there with you, right in the middle of it. It's going to turn out okay. Don't ever lose your faith. Like Job said, I shall never betray my Lord. I know my Redeemer lives. Amen? Amen. Thank you. At this time in our service, we have an invitation, not mine, but God's invitation. We don't have altar calls here. They used to do that in the past, I think, but an altar call, for instance, it starts in your heart first. It's just when you say to yourself, Lord, it's been a really rough year. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have anything to lose. I've already lost so much. But when you say, Lord, let me be my Lord and Savior. I, forgive me of my sins. I, I know what you did at Calvary. I want to be with you. And let the Lord come in. And that's my invitation to everyone. Let us stand for our closing song. I have decided. And now may God bless each and every one of you. May God create within your heart a heart of love, obedience, a heart that wants, that hungers to be with the Lord. And may God bless you this week. Amen. On behalf of Branson Christian Church, we invite you to go downstairs. We have a lot of food for you downstairs if you have the time. And so... We wait for James.
James is a coming. Wake up, James. Come on down, boy. Here he comes. 